So after a long wait, thank you to Calculus 3, I'm finally going to discuss my Big Ten post Week 5 power rankings. Heading into Week 6, these are the Big Ten teams in order who I think are, you know, good, bad, and then all the way bent down at the bottom is the ugly. Let's get right into it. I'm going to try to discuss each of these teams for around a minute. So first of all, you have the Iowa Hawkeyes. Iowa really impressed me against Maryland. And the reason they are ahead of Ohio State is because Maryland, in a far worse sense, is similar to Ohio State. Talented, you, you have talent all around. You have, a great, you have a, in theory, a great, great offense. And your defense is meh for the talent that you have. Ohio State has improved, but they're still, you know, we'll get to this later. And Iowa tore them limb from limb and put them in a barrel of acid. That's, that's what happened. I mean, Talia Tagovailoa ruining his chances of winning the Heisman. That night, honestly, Iowa's defense is they, they sit there. They have the audacity to sit there and twiddle their thumbs, and then you throw a pass a millimeter off, picked. And I said this in my Penn State-Iowa preview. Clifford doesn't throw perfect balls. I- Iowa's going to have a field day. They have a field day with any quarterback, because I still think Talia is somewhat good. Iowa's, Phil Parker's defense is something else. They might win the Big Ten solely off of their defense. Ohio State at two. Now, Ohio State is a team, I know they have one loss. I know them being ahead of three undefeated teams might, you know, irritate some people, especially with Oregon losing. But after their performance against Rutgers, and who came, played close to Michigan, I'm going to give Michigan and Ohio State the benefit of the doubt here. Michigan the benefit of the doubt that that game was a fluke in a similar way to that Ohio State's game against Tulsa, was a fluke because Tulsa is not a good football team, but I'm going to give Ohio State the benefit of the doubt in that they beat a solid, well, a somewhat solid team, a team that is improving. They beat him handily. Stroud didn't throw any picks. I think he threw for five touchdowns. Henderson had a field quarter. Teague looked good. I mean, Ohio State overall, all sides looked amazing. So I have to give them the benefit of the doubt here. How they played against Rutgers, their offense is explosive. And I think, you know, if Ohio State was at a neutral site or hosted Michigan and Penn State, which they do host Penn State, they would, you know, eventually wear down those defenses through the air and on the ground. Michigan, Michigan at third. Michigan, I think... You know, they've stayed at the third spot, but we switched Penn State and Ohio State. Michigan would have jumped to two if Ohio State didn't blow the doormats off of Rutgers or if Michigan played better against Rutgers. Michigan, that game against Rutgers still has a stain in my mind. If you beat Rutgers, let's say 49 to to 13 was the score of that game. You would probably be in my top five. My own team would, yes, be in my own top five. And you'd be ahead of Ohio State in these power rankings, but that isn't the case. You need to get better at running the ball against conference opponents. You threw well. The defense did very well. And I know Wisconsin is a bad offense, but you dominated Wisconsin's O-line like no other team. You dominated them better than Penn State dominated them better than Notre Dame. You dominated Wisconsin by far the best amount on on offense, and I would say on defense, than Notre Dame or Penn State. And that is impressive. I think this is one of Harbaugh's bigger wins. And this team is solid. They don't make mistakes. They haven't turned the ball. Their first and second string teams have not turned the ball over at all. Their only turnover is from the third-string quarterback. Michigan is just playing some solid old school. They're kind of doing what like Wisconsin normally does, but with better talent. And that could be scary if some other issues are perfected. Penn State at four. Penn State, 
What I always have liked about Franklin, despite the fact that I don't like James Franklin, is Penn State, unlike Michigan, had the confidence and the intelligence to adapt to the spread. And then did something I liked even better. You got Mike Yurchich, who is, you know, amazing at running the air raid, helped develop Justin Fields. We see this in how Sean Clifford is playing better. The 24 to nothing game, despite the fact that I thought Indiana would play you closer, was an unimpressive and boring. And yes, if you win that way, you do. But this isn't what... I mean, Penix didn't even look alive. He went down injured. Indiana's defenders got injured. Clifford almost threw what could have been, you know, a pick six in different circumstances. And, I mean, you got stopped on fourth and goal by an, Indi- again, injured Indiana defense who is not better than Wisconsin's defense or your own defense, I would regard. It was just unimpressive to me. If you beat Iowa, you'll vault to number one or two. And then you, what you'll be is you'll be like exactly like Franklin's older teams in a, in a weird, in a defensive sense with a, you know, I would say probably better passing game, less dominant rush game. Your wide receivers are good. Penn State football, despite dropping, still a very good near elite team. Michigan State at fifth. Michigan State, you know, I I like, even as a Michigan fan, that Mel Tucker can come in here with what, again, should be, should have been an island of misfit toys. And I think it's Jaden Reed, or his, his last name is Reed anyway, returns punts. He has similar numbers to to Desmond Howard in different categories, like all-purpose yards. It, it's crazy. And yes, I get he wasn't playing the like you know schedule that Desmond Howard did in the 90s, nor was he you know being utilized as less because back then you didn't you didn't pass as much and all that grand stuff. But still, it's impressive. He's really good. Kenneth Walker is really good. Peyton Thorne is really good. The problem is everywhere else. Michigan State thrives off of big plays. Mike Valenti, sports analyst, podcaster, radio host, who's a state fan, said it perfectly. They live off the big plays. Michigan State might be the best team in the Big Ten outside of Ohio State and maybe Penn State's passing game for big offensive plays. However, you can't live off of those. Your offensive line is bad. Your defense is, oh my gosh, it it is worse than anything Mark D'Antonio ever set his eyes upon. It needs to improve if you want to beat the teams above you. Nebraska at six, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Nebraska, you know, they should have beaten State in a, in a certain sense. They destroyed Northwestern, who granted is a bottom, they're like, my goodness, they're bottom 20th in total defense. They have, the I think, the worst defense in the Big Ten. Still, their issue is inconsistency. They choke in in big games. They can't finish. You see the potential. If this team had the power and the discipline to finish, this team would be undefeated, and you would have a top 10 matchup in Lincoln. I'm not lying to you. They are inconsistent, though, and their offensive line is bad. Their offensive line is consistently bad, and that's not going to match up well against Michigan's defensive line. Anyway, Rutgers at 7. You may be thinking, well, this team just got humiliated by Ohio State. Vedral, you know, looked bad. Everything just looked bad. Okay, listen. Assuming Michigan and Ohio State are the top two teams, and even putting that Michigan game as a fluke, Rutgers has still played pretty darn good football. Outside of the Ohio State game and Michigan game, though that was, I wouldn't even count that, they won the turnover battle or at least tied it, and, and like didn't make any turnovers, didn't force any. They are disciplined. They have one of the fewest, they're one of the best teams in the nation when it comes to having the fewest penalties. This team 
would beat most teams below them away solely because of discipline and because they tried trick plays. The only reason they didn't work against Ohio State is because Ryan Day worked with Greg Schiano and because Greg Schiano unloaded the entire playbook last year against Ohio State in that one game where they, you know, they had off the lateral a punt return. So, and Ohio State's offense is really explosive. Rutgers, from the get-go, did not have a good offense. Their defense was their strength. That's a bad mismatch against Ohio State. That's why I still have them at 7th. This team is very much improved, and Greg Schiano looks to possibly get this team bowling. This could be the same thing for Maryland and Mike Loxley. The issue is, Mr. Loxley, you didn't, you got, you know, shanked by Iowa. Ohio State, this, I, I think this game, the Ohio State game could be a shootout of, of like, where a whole scientific study could be done in it, like some amazing shootout. But I'm thinking it's going to be more, a similar bludgeoning to the Iowa game with less picks, but just more offensive dominance from the Ohio State side of things. Maryland, their issue is their head coach. That's just my opinion. I mean, Mike Loxley is not really a proven head coach, period. Amen. And I've said this. The only reason I have Maryland or had them going bowling is because I think Dan Enos is a good QB coach. And that was called into question the other day. And they have talent, which the talent, I think, is still there. I just think Iowa is ultra disciplined. So Maryland, you know, if Maryland looks bad in their next game or performs poorly against Ohio State in a worse way than I expected, they'll collapse down this list, probably to, you know, the bottom bottom five, bottom four. I'm keeping them up there because they've have four wins and because Iowa's first in the conference. Indiana at nine. They stayed here because they lost and because they didn't put up any points. They got shut out. You know, Michael Penix Jr. was supposed to be, and I even fell for this, supposed to be this dark horse Heisman candidate. And he has Ty Fry Fogel. Indiana's underrated by talent means. You have Nick Sheridan, who is one of like the youngest OCs and has a good mind in the country. Couldn't put up any points, even with the ball inside Penn State's 10. And credit this is to Penn State's good defense, but you have to do something. You, you have to do something, and that's why I didn't move you higher, and the only reason I didn't move you lower is because you faced Penn State, Iowa, and Cincy, who I have all in my top six. Your three losses are all the teams who I think are in the top six, and I think you have enough offense to beat any team below you, and you could very well beat Rutgers and Maryland. We will see about those, however. Wisconsin at 10th. I did not feel like moving Wisconsin down because, again, Michigan's good. I predicted Michigan to win by 10 points. Wisconsin, I mean, they disappointed me on offense, but their defense is so good that I look at all the teams below them and I'm like, there's no, like, with how Minnesota lost to Bowling Green, there's no reason There's no reason to believe that Minnesota will come into Madison and win, especially without Ibrahim. There's no reason to believe that Purdue will beat them after Minnesota went down to West Lafayette and beat them. Illinois could be a toss-up, but I do think Wisconsin will actually come out on top in a certain sense. Northwestern, we'll, we'll get to that later. Wisconsin reminds me of 2018 MSU, a team with a national title defense and with a FCS offense which means against a team like Michigan, Penn State, and Ohio State, Iowa, and even Notre Dame, like good teams you're going to lose to. You might upset one of them. You're going to lose to the great majority of them. These small teams, like what they did to Eastern Michigan, don't get it straight. Don't get it confused. They will dominate and frustratingly bludgeon these smaller teams. I have no doubt about that. 11, Minnesota. You beat Purdue, so I had to raise you, but that Bowling Green loss and looking at how Ohio State was not the same team it is now, 
when they nearly lost to you and without Ibrahim and Tanner Morgan just, you know, being inconsistent, I can't put you above Wisconsin. I can't put you above Indiana. I can only put you above Purdue and the two bottom feeders below Purdue. That's that's all I can do. I mean, Potts is playing good football. You have talent. I don't think now is the time to even consider looking to change from P.J. Fleck, despite, you know, the Bowling Green loss. Minnesota's 3-2, and two, and with how they beat Purdue, they'll likely beat Illinois and Northwestern, maybe find another win. I'd say there's still a good hope that you can go bowling. Purdue... You know, losing to Minnesota at home and then in retrospect losing to Notre Dame the way you did is just the epitome of this team. You beat Ohio State and people are still likely living off the idea that this team beat Ohio State. Three and two, you know, you beat your your one good win is against Oregon State, but I even have my own skepticism about that because of how bad the Pac-12 is. Win another game against a better team. I don't even know who your next game is, but I will. I will, because I, you know, look at these games while I look at the Big Ten while they're playing. And I don't know, I confess I don't know Purdue's next game. They have some talent at wide receiver on the defensive line. Their quarterback, the last time I checked, was, you know, didn't really turn over the ball a whole too lot. But this team needs to win against some, you know, decent Big Ten teams before I raise them. But they, like a lot of other teams in the Big Ten, you play your cards right, you can go bowling. Bowling's not out of the question for any team at the moment except for these next two. And here comes Illinois. (laughs) I have to laugh when I think of Brett Bielema. And Northwestern. Now that may sound mean to Brett, and the only reason I laugh is because I think of I think of him against Nebraska in 2012 with his he brings his what was it his seven in five team to the championship they they don't even deserve to be there he's on the sidelines looking all mad as his headset is down as his team is running through Nebraska and just blowing them up bomb, carpet bombing them with Melvin Gordon but this Illinois team is not that. They beat Nebraska. Nebraska's far improved. Illinois is just gutter trash. I mean, you got blown out by Virginia. You lost to UTSA. You struggled against Charlotte. I, I don't even. I don't even know what to tell you. And then, I mean, I mentioned Virginia, UTSA. You lost to Purdue too. I that was the a super low scoring game, which was also disappointing about Purdue. Brett Bielema has a lot of work to do, and this Wisconsin game will tell us a lot. They beat Wisconsin. I think they will rise a spot in my power rankings, and they'll be better than Northwestern, which, speaking of which, I I should have seen this coming preseason, and that's why I lowered Northwestern's projected wins from 7 to 6 in my finals, because I realized Pat Fitzgerald doesn't do well when he loses mass amounts of talent. When you have two first-round picks, you lose talent. Did you see what this team did against Nebraska? They showed potential, and then Scott Frost stuck up his finger and wagged it and said no. No, absolutely not. Nebraska ran for over four, I think it was over 400 yards, humiliating the Cats. The Cats are... You know, no disrespect to Michigan State either. Beating the Cats means you have a pulse. That's all it means. That's all this means. I mean, they have wins against two. They lost to Duke, who we know is not good, besides their running back. They beat one FCS team, and then they beat Ohio, who I think just got their first win. Ryan Holinsky is basically, I think, their only, and their running back, I think it was Claire. He had some good moments against Nebraska, who does have a solid defense. Those are their only two hopes right now. Their defense is an absolute mess. Those are my power rankings. If you have any questions, if you want to disagree with them or agree with them or just voice your opinion, comment below, please. I love to have discussions. 
trying to be more interactive even as the channel grows it becomes harder but i'm trying to stay interactive these are my power rankings and i'm excited to see how these change heading into ne next week thank you all for watching and i'll see you around